This is Garrett Chobi. Today we will be discussing an endoscopic transteroid approach for a recurrent meningioma. This is a case with myself as well as my neurosurgical partner, uh, Dr. Michael Link and his fellow uh, at the time, uh, Maria paris This is a patient who had undergone three previous craniotomies for a uh, large sphenoorbital meningioma with residual disease, as you can see here, as well as a significant amount of pneumocephalus. We begin in the right nasal cavity, uh, opening up the sphenoid sinus, as you can see here. Uh, we went ahead and uh, designed and raised an extended right-sided nasal septal flap uh, because we needed the ipsilateral transteroid approach. We knew that we would likely uh, use our artery on that side during the transteroid approach, such that we raised a right-sided flap. So here's the last bit of that flap being raised, and then we'll go ahead and uh, place it into the right side of the nasopharynx for safekeeping while we perform the left-sided approach. Here we are identifying the sphenoid os on the left side. You can see uh, a little bit of uh, fat pooching out there from the previous uh, resection and reconstruction via his craniotomy. We'll then create a limited posterior septectomy uh, crossing over the contralateral side to create a nice uh, wide common sphenoid cavity as you can see here. Here we're raising uh, the mucosa overlying the face of the sphenoid in the keel of the rostrum as you can see here. And we'll go ahead and take a downgoing kerosene to remove that bony face of the sphenoid and then remove the keel of the rostrum in its entirety. This is an important step in the operation to ensure that you have full access to the clival recess uh, throughout the rest of the case. At this juncture, we'll proceed with our maxillary entrostomy. So here's a backbiter taking down the uncinate process, as you can see here, uh, up towards the maxillary line, and then identifying the natural os just behind it and dilating that posteriorly. We'll then remove uh, the medial wall of the maxillary sinus in order to gain access to the sinus and identify the posterior wall, which is the face of the pterygopalatine fossa. We'll then take down the ethmoid bulla, as you can see here, and uh, work through the ethmoid cavity to skeletonize the orbit. Then here we are identifying the crista ethmoidalis in the sphenopalatine foramen. A maxillary ball probe is being placed there uh, into the foramen into the pterygopalatine fossa. Then we'll use kerosene rongeurs to take down uh, the bony posterior wall of the sinus towards the pterygopalatine fossa. The key portion in this part of the operation is taking down the bony back wall of the sinus but leaving the periosteum intact. This will keep the fat of the pterygopalatine fossa contained so it doesn't spill out in your field as you continue the rest of the surgery. We've then identified the artery, and here you can see us drilling down some of the bone here between the vidian uh, nerve and V2, which you'll see in a little bit. Here we are performing a bipolar cautery of the pseudopalatine artery and then dividing that. And that will allow us to really retract the contents of the pterygopalatine fossa inferiorly and laterally, getting better access to drill out additional bone of the pterygoid body. Now you can begin to see V2 going up towards foramen rotundum in that shot there, as those contents are retracted inferiorly and laterally, allowing us to access and drill uh, more bone away in that particular area. And here we are identifying the residual meningioma that's coming into the lateral recess of the sphenoid sinus in this location as my neurosurgical colleagues uh, dissect out and remove that additional tumor. After they're satisfied with their tumor resection, we'll then place a small piece of a fat graft covered in some surgical cell into the defect. And the next step that we'll do is bring um, our right-sided extended nasal septal flap cross court across the sphenoid to cover over our defect. So here we are smoothing down the inner sinus septation so there's a nice flat surface for that flap to lay across. This will help to uh, repair uh, the CSF leak as well as to prevent ongoing pneumocephalus as you saw in the patient's preoperative scan. So here we are bringing that extended flap across from right to left through that posterior septal defect and into the contralateral sphenoid sinus as you can see here. Then we'll carefully unfurl that, uh, ensuring that it's uh, nicely unfurled and covering the entirety of the defect as you can see there. The key points of a transteroid approach are the following. You should always consider your reconstructive options ahead of time because you will typically burn the ipsilateral sphenopalatine artery during your transteroid approach. 
This approach is typically reserved for accessing the lateral recess of the sphenoid sinus, and thus a careful examination of preoperative imaging is very important. As you access the pterygopalatine fossa, it is ideal to leave the periosteal layer intact such that the fat does not spill out and interfere with your field.